You know, Hostess is an American icon. And I remember when Hostess filed bankruptcy a couple of years ago. And I remember they pulled the Twinkies and Ho-Hos and Ding Dongs and Snowballs. They took them off the market. Now, I hadn't had a Twinkie or a, a Ho-Ho or anything since I was like eight years old. But I was completely mewling over the fact that Hostess was not around anymore. And the first thing I thought is, damn it, I didn't paint one Twinkie my entire life. So at one point at eBay, they were selling Twinkies for like $20,000, you know, because people really won't, you know. Um, then, you know, but the first thing I noticed is that, wow, it's an icon like that is, is disappearing. You know, imagine this world without Twinkies. You can't. I don't know if it is or not. Imagine the next generation. It's like I think about, you know, remember Saturday morning cartoons? Yes. And now they don't exist anymore. And I remember last Saturday I was like thinking, I want to watch cartoons and I reach and I said, Cartoons are not there anymore. I mean, even the cartoons that we used to watch were really cool. Nowadays, they're kind of oh, like really bizarre. There's a theater around here that's showing cartoons Saturday morning. The old ones. Yeah, I can't I can imagine life without that. Do you remember the Twinkie defense? This guy who had too many Twinkies. Well, one of my students did that. Yeah, the one of Dan White and, uh, yeah. Um, the Twinkie defense. Remember that the mayor the mayor of San Francisco got shot and, and uh, they used a yeah you remember the mayor that's the year Dianne Feinstein became mayor, mayor. Um, but so, somebody claimed the lawyers claimed that they ate a Twinkie and he ate so many Twinkies his brain went crazy and then he went and killed the mayor um, so you know one of my one, one of my students uh, actually did, now you, you guys are not the only ones that do the homework assignment, but one of my students actually did that. They did a box of Twinkies, Twinkies laying out, and a revolver next to it. Oh my God, that's bad to me. It was a very, very moving piece though. Sure. I thought it was real interesting this week that they went to the Pulse nightclub they went to the Pulse nightclub, and there was an artist outside painting the club. Wow. A plain air painter painting the club. Where the, where the shootings were in, in Orlando. Yeah. And so they were interviewing the artist, and they were saying, why are you out here? Mm -hmm. And he says, for no other reason than I felt compelled to do that, because it's a historical moment. It takes quite an artist to see the now and find it important to create it. Like right now, it's the most incredible moment that you could have. It's fleeting. And how many of you would have thought, wow, I should go down to the nightclub and stand across that and paint it and record it as it was? Those are the things that artists think about. A couple of people wrote music about it. That's what they do. Art is about communication. And so when people are writing music about such a tragedy, not only it helps them heal and deal with this situation, but it really brings us together on an on a understanding. So like when you're looking at the, the Twinkies and the revolver, that is an incredible message that you can actually state. I mean, you imagine having a box of Twinkies and a gun sitting next to it. There's all kinds of messages that, the, that you can come up out of that. And it was purely one of those things that she had the box of Twinkies and her husband looked at it and said, that's kind of boring. And so she thought, well, what do you want me to do? Put a gun in here, you know, like, you know. And he said, yeah. And then she thought about it for a second. She says, oh, wow, that's brilliant. But that's like being in the moment. Now there are artists that want to be in museum shows. There are artists that want to have their work noticed. And 
if you are controversial, if you are awake, if you are, are part of a society that has your eyes open, you would be down at the Pulse nightclub recording that. If there's a riot somewhere, you would be out there recording that too. If you were really awake, you would record Donald Trump <laughs> and the, the chaos that he is. Just his picture, you know, evokes emotions in people. Now that's not to say that we're artists that we like to paint pretty things. And some people don't want to paint controversial. But sometimes if you are entering into a major art show, like for the Triton Museum or Artist of America or all these different things, they get hundreds of thousands of photos of paintings of everyday mundane stuff. I mean, how many times can you see a woman's back naked? you know, with a drape over it. Or how many times do you see like a lemon and an orange and, you know, peeled? Or, you know, how many glowing tangerines can you actually get? So all of a sudden, here they are looking through all of these slides, and all of a sudden this painting pops up of a Twinkie and a revolver. And they're emotionally broken into thought. And remember, painting is communication. My conversation right now is stimulating thought. If it wasn't, you guys wouldn't be sitting here. It's my job to make you think. But a lot of you don't put that energy into your paintings. You kind of wander through calendars, looking through pictures, family pictures. You don't really sit there and go, hmm, he wants us to do Twinkies. What can I do with that? And part of these homework assignments are finding extraordinary things out of ordinary. Like you said, remember we were doing the, the bob wire? I mean, I mean the bob wire, the chicken wire. And you think, what am I going to do with that? And then you start working with it, and then you find something. So inspiration isn't going to come because you're driving home thinking about it. Inspiration isn't going to come when you're at the store buying the Twinkies. When does inspiration come? You've experienced that. It comes when you're actually doing it. In the moment. When, you're when you hear news like Hostess is now going out of business, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to go run down and get some Hostess Twinkies and Ho-Hos and stuff like that because they may never happen again. <laughs> And yeah, there could be another company that comes out with Hostess Twinkies and stuff. I'm sure they would have sold the recipes or the rights because those things are very valuable. Um, but I was immediately thinking, oh, as an artist, I didn't even play with that. And, and, and you know, Little Debbie's aren't Hostess. If Little Debbie's makes Twinkies, it's not the same. Twinkies are Twinkies. They have to have the Twinkies box, the icon package. When I'm asking you to paint one of these, though, I'm not asking you to paint <coughs> Twinkies or Ho-Hos anyway. You know, like if you were to go paint the Pulse nightclub down in Florida, if you just render it like a photograph, that's not going to be anything. You still have to create art. Even if you're trying to, to state a message or trying to render an object, I'm never looking for those objects. I mean, when I tell you to go home and paint something, I don't want a painting of a Twinkie. You know, I want to see it as a still life, and I want you to use a Twinkie as if an old master would have used bread and butter, or a glass of wine, or a still life with grapes. The thing is, that subject matter has been so done. Portraits have been so done. So when these judges go through all of these paintings, what do you think will pop up? something that hasn't been done. They want to see artists being artists. They don't want to see rendered pictures done well. There's a lot of people who can do that. A lot of people can render pictures well. That's why I invite you to not only just do the homework assignment, but do it like your life depends on it. Now I don't want to make this into like, oh you didn't do the homework assignment, everybody's bad. It has nothing to do with it. All what I can do is have you look at it and go, you know, this is an opportunity. And I might not always be here. 
You know, last week it took me 10 hours to drive home, wow. four hours extra, oh my God. because a police officer ran into another car and killed the person that was in it. And so I was stuck in bumper to bumper traffic for four hours while they were trying to, that was, remember I was driving home, that was outside of Reading. Um, and I mean, that was just some kid driving home, you know, followed the speed limit, and then a police officer of all things ran into the back of him and killed him. You know, and I'm on the uh, I'm on the road a lot, and so the you know I might not be here next week, and you might go, damn it, I should have painted one last ho ho for him. <laughs> but the reality is, is that I'm trying to have you take uh, at our homework assignments, and really figure out what I'm requesting. I'm requesting really great art, that's somewhat avant garde and somewhat inspirational. And for those of you that have done the homework assignments in the past, you, you have found the pleasure in the homework halfway through when you're actually doing it. The students that have gone into shows lately, the students that have come back and said, guess what, I sold a painting. Most of those are the homework assignments of these really bizarre things. I have my students that I coach online there's a lot of them that are doing these homework assignments and I get messages back from them that they post them up on Facebook and people are buying them. People will buy a glass of water done well or a broken egg. Our homework assignments are getting a little more complicated than one or two objects. I mean, the reason why I wanted to have the, the ho-hos is because what I love about it is the iconicness of it. So many of these things disappear and including hostess almost did. But it's not just the Twinkie itself, it's the packaging that's iconic. It's the cardboard thing that it sits on that's uh, iconic. It's the box that it comes in. What we do with a box at four o'clock in the morning when we're starving, <laughs> a little bit stoned, tear apart a box and you know, and then arrange all of that stuff in a way that is as serious as an old master's painting of a goblet and some grapes. And how do you paint that? Mm -hmm. It's really extraordinary. One thing that I did learn from my coaching students is that um, you can be sued if you actually painted a painting and you put Hostess Twinkies on the, on, on the painting. Now, it's highly likely that they won't. But you can be sued for that. Copyright, yeah, because it's a trademark infringement. Huh? With Twinkies with a gun, you may. They may because that's kind of bad press. But you know, you. But the thing is, what's really great about that is because if you're an artist, yeah. Well, the lawyers are so expensive that there has to be meat on the bone for them. So, like, if you're really wealthy and you did something like that, they could come in and try to fight you. But you know, don't get involved with the lawyers if you don't want to. Anyway, lawyers are just beautiful people. <laughs> anyway, they have a moral obligation to separate you from your money, but we won't go into that. But the thing is, one thing, one thing that we can learn from Donald Trump's playbook is that press of any kind, good or bad, is good. Okay. So if you all of a sudden got picked up by Twinkies as a, a copyright infringement and they came after you and sued you, Imagine the amount of press oh, yeah, that you could sure. get out of that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Imagine the controversy. Every art magazine would cover your lawsuit because it's so ridiculous to have a big company sue a little artist. So in a way, and, and I was told by this um, by a marketer, some, one of my students' sons did uh, Grand Theft Auto, the, 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 the game that they play, you know. He was in charge of the marketing and he said, if you want to get feverishly marketing, you have to do something that is controversial. So one of the things he said, so what is controversial? And I said, well, you know, I thought about it. And you know, if you paint Cypress Point on, on a 17 mile drive and Carmel, the golf course there actually has that as their logo. And if you notice, when you go into Carmel, you will not see a painting of Cypress Point. Because 
the, the golf course actually has gone in and litigated artists mm -hmm. saying that that's their copyright. Now, I don't know how in the world that you can copyright something that was created by nature. But there was rumors that the national parks were going to do that, where you couldn't photograph Half Dome and things and use it for commercial use. And that might even come down. Because right now what they're doing is they're, they're opening up naming the Awani Lodge like the PG&E Lodge. And, you know, Wawona Tunnel is going to be like the, the, you know, the Google Tunnel. They're actually going to sell off the names that... I know, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, but anyway, so he said if you could actually do something like that and then get into a involved in the lawsuit, which is, you know, that crazy, that thing that's so crazy, you could actually run with that for a while and do some good marketing. So it's something to think about, you know, and challenging that. And then at the end, you know, there's no money in it for them, so they'll kind of drop it. Most of the time what they want to do is they want to tell you not to do it again. So one of my students that I coach, she named her, instead of using Twinkies, she used Binkies. <laughs> you know, so she changed the, the H to a B and, or not, no, the T to a B or whatever, so it's to Binkies. Um, so anyway, so you might want to do that. So, what I want you to do this week, your homework assignment this week, and I want you to take this on seriously. Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to tell you what it is. But I don't want to see a painting of that. I want to see a painting that has good highlights, good compositions, good eye magnets. I want you to take this iconic thing and turn it into a serious painting, worthy of an old master's painting. Done correctly, I guarantee you, you will get into, just wait, impatient girls often miss dessert. Done correctly, you might win some awards with this. If anything, if you show this in a show, you will definitely have probably more people remember that painting than any other painting, if you paint it correctly. Now, you don't have to be clever. All you have to do is follow my rules, making sure that your center focal point is an effect, not a thing. I'm going to tell you the things that I want to see. It's very iconic, it's very Americana. But if you can do this painting seriously, you may win an award with it. Of course, with all of you now competing, it's not gonna be that special. But you gotta think like an artist. You gotta think like an artist. You gotta look at things that we take ordinary. If you look at Warhol, he had us look at Campbell's soup cans. Mm -hmm. If you think of Warhol, what do you think of? Campbell's. Campbell's. And then you ask yourself, why do I think of Campbell's soup cans? Because all he did was say, here, look at this. That's it. And you remember it. Can you remember any other Warhol? Maybe uh, Madonna, um, Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor. But yeah, I mean, those were like his, just because he did the Campbell's soup can. Because what he did was he said, look, art's everywhere. Well, art is everywhere. We deal with it all the time. So your, your homework assignment this week is the iconic burger, fries, and a Coke. Preferably the McDonald's one. Why? Because McDonald's is iconic. McDonald's hamburgers are wrapped in uh, paper. Um, the, the, the cups have the logos on them. The red box is iconic, you know. French fries, how you design all that is crucial. Now, one of the students that I did coach, I think she's back east somewhere, she went and did a Happy Meal. And you know what she forgot? The toy. I said, it's not a Happy Meal without the toy. And she says, well, I don't want to paint. And I go, well, <laughs> I mean, what's more iconic than the toy that's in the Happy Meal? You know, that's why kids want to have it. Um, yeah, it's like some, but you know, some of those toys are worth a lot of money. Um, so anyway, so if you're going to do a Happy Meal, include the, the, the toy, you know, take out of the package, leave the packaging there, leave all the packaging, leave the bag that the McDonald's. McDonald's puts in so much I mean, you know, you get 
Uh, one of the paintings that uh, came in, the little plastic um, cap that goes on top of the soda, okay? Mm -hmm. She squeezed ketchup on that and they had the ketchup containers and then she had a salt and pepper thing on, mixed on that. The iconic straw with the, the the, the yellow line running through. I mean, look at all these wonderful things. The, the orange paper that the hamburger came in, um, the, the, uh, the french fries, and, and she, awesome job she did on it. The french fries tipped over and all of them kind of laying out. And you can spread them out so that they become like eye magnets, which we're looking for. The paper you can adjust. You have all of these wonderful elements to do a really awesome still life. Now remember, I'm not, I, you know, I can come up here and talk for an hour, that's not. This is to inspire you, and not just to do a hamburger, but to actually look around you and see possibilities of things, especially things that are A, very iconic, you know, that people can recognize and say, hey, you know, yeah, it's just a stupid hamburger in a bag, but it can be a still life. And I can do this, I can do this plastic cup as beautiful as a silver goblet. I mean, I kind of imagine, you know, some of these like David LaFell, mm -hmm. instead of painting peaches and painting apples and stuff that he does, what would he do with a hamburger and fries? You know? I mean, what, how, how surprising would it be to see a David LaFell or a Richard Schmidt painting of something that is so ordinary and do it so extraordinary that you go, wow, yeah, that makes total sense. And then what I invite you to do is to start looking around to look for other things. I'm looking for things all the time. I'm walking around, I pass by a dumpster and I see like mylar balloons and I go, that, the surface of mylar balloons is so cool. What, are, what could we do with that? A lot of my ideas come from students because they sit and they'll try to do something and I go, that's a great idea. You know, and you think about all the things we take for granted. You know, one of the projects that they're working on in one of my other classes is saltine crackers. In the iconic, accord, you know, the, the wrapper and the unwrapped and stuff. I mean, just that alone, just how you work with those textures. How do you paint? And as a study, it's like, well, how do you paint a hamburger? How do you get light on a hamburger? How do you get light on a plastic cup lid? How do I arrange these so that they're interesting? How do I get the effect of light? Because we don't want to have things. We want to have you know, so it's got to look like a masterpiece. Imagine if David LaFell painted a hamburger. What would it look like? So, what is missing in this painting? A focal point. A focal point. Why do you feel that a focal point is missing? Everything's kind of... You're bouncing all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing kind of just kind of like, just kind of falls apart. It's like it's a good idea, but there's nothing that, you know. What about the clouds kind of pop at you? Not really. No, you know, and, and the problem is with the clouds, the way that they are, there's no edges, there's no, there's nothing that really, you know, it's like when you do a painting, and, and again with the homework assignment, when you do a painting, that thing that you want them to see, that one thing, is got to have the sharpest edges, the, the, the brightest brights, the darkest darks. That's got to be the thing that you want to look at. Now, the homework assignment was to do clouds, right? Wasn't that our homework assignment to do clouds? Several years ago, wasn't it? Years ago. Three weeks ago, or four, four classes, three, three classes ago, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so it's clouds. So, so in the area that you have your highlights, that really should have a hard edge on it. Even if it's clouds, you've got to put something in there. It also should be brighter than anything else. Right now, if I look at the clouds and I look at this, they're both even. And they both have soft edges. And they both almost kind of feel like I'm looking through a really dirty window. Yeah. Through a brush. <laughs> So imagine, imagine this, imagine, so, so what I'm going to do is, you know, this is the art here. This is the art, okay? So I'm going to describe to you an art piece. 
imagine here an incredibly bright, brilliant thunderhead cloud. Beautiful. You've seen those. You've stopped and wondered at times. The beauty about being an artist is that you, you see the beauty that's around you right now. And so imagine that being just bright and light and glooming and glowing. And let's say that light is just trans transitioning into a beautiful, maybe even a, a, a orangey kind of transition into gray. Just this, and then the sky around it, vivid blue, beautiful, clear crystal, like right in between a, a thunderstorm. And just, just the contrast of those two alone would give us a wonderful central focal point. So boom, we'd have something to look at. Now the secondary focal point, she's got all this mustard grass in here, but if you notice the mustard grass in the front and the back are all the same. Imagine if she took really some bright color and just highlighted the mustard grass, just as if the light's coming between the clouds and hitting the mustard grass back there. Boom, a secondary focal point. That would bring the viewer down to here. And then let's say put in over here a beautiful effect of some kind. It could be a reflection. It could be um, just some highlights hitting. If we darken all this uh, middle ground in here and put in a little bit of highlight in here, darken the foreground, you would have then a triangle here, here, going up into here, and we would have a much more stable composition. But as it is, you kind of softened everything out. You didn't put any really big contrast, any transitions. This doesn't go from dark to light. It kind of goes from medium to light. And whenever you kind of just go from medium to light, you don't get the full concentration of the, the color. If we go from really bright to really dark, if you bring those clouds really dark and you have a really bright, the contrasts are huge. And that's what catches our eye. If on an afternoon, at 12 o'clock when you're walking around, nothing catches your eye because everything's kind of the same. But when the sun goes down, you have cast shadows that cause darks and you have bright lights that are hitting the sides of walls. <coughs> Vertical planes are being illuminated. It's exciting at that point. This painting doesn't have any of that. There's no wonder, it's just kind of there. Midday. Well, she painted what she saw. So don't do that. Well, don't paint what, what you said, see. But you said paint what you see. Yeah, only if it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, but in this case, so she has to um, interpret this. Yeah. Well, you know, you you can paint what you see, and if it's if it's ordinary, yeah. it's not worth painting because there's a lot of paintings in thrift shops that look like this. There's a lot of paintings that are just not. If you end up with a scene that isn't going anywhere, you gotta prop it up and give more. That's where the artist, the big A in art, comes from. You gotta push it out and express it. And one thing I tell people is you gotta find a central focal point. What is it about this painting you want me to see? And then you wanna highlight that first. Boom. Strong. If you guys are gonna do the homework assignment, the burger, fries, and a Coke, you got to decide where you want the light to hit. What is it that? You could put the whole hamburger in shadow. One of my students up in Reading, she's really clever. She's always trying to like play games with it, but I, one of the things that she would do is that she would have a, a painting of a table. And you could actually see the table. It's like almost in a room, but it's up close. And she'll have the feeling like a door's just creaked open. And she'll have a flood of light on the table with nothing on it and then all the objects in the shadow in the background. Uh, absolutely brilliant. I have another student that did a homework assignment very similar to like that, that the whole foreground of all of her objects were literally in shadow, and the light was in the room, and all of it was just formed a silhouette. But it was interesting to see what they do with that. So anyway, if you're painting something, and it's not, it's up to you to embellish it. You don't want any mediocre paintings. You want to make sure every painting is stunning. And a lot of times you have to ask yourself before you paint it, is it worth painting? And I remember um, Susanna's father. I asked him, you know, what is his take on really great art? And he gave me a whole list of things. And the final thing was, uh, you have to ask yourself, was it worth painting? 
before you start. Is it worth painting this? If I don't see anything in it, if I, don't, if I can't come up with anything, if it doesn't inspire me, if it doesn't speak to others, it's like making dinner for yourself. After a couple of dinners, you go, top ramen is fine. <laughs> it's hard to inspire when you're just doing it for yourself. And painting is fun, yeah. But it's much more fun if you're trying to communicate and create something for that. So this painting is just lacking that. But you could put that in. That spark is in your control because you're in my classes. You know how to do that. So okay. is, that, is that a good idea to highlight things after you do everything yourself? No. No, you want to work with what you have. So if you see light, put light in. If you see shadow, put in. Because when you start getting the things on your paintings the way you want them, then you can say, okay, how can I get it further? How can I take it to the next step? But it's kind of hard when you're thinking. It's like I'm thinking about all these projects I have to do at home. And when I start making lists of stuff, it becomes so overwhelming, I don't know where to start. And I just start with something, and I make that, and then that spears on something else. Once you actually start working with a task, and most of you, most of you will start with, let's say, the, the hostess homework, or even the homework this week of the, the McDonald's hamburger. Most of you will start, and in the process of working with it, ideas come, right? Didn't you say, like, with the, with the bob wire, I mean, with the chicken yeah, wire? Yeah, once you kind of are in it, it's really hard. So these homework assignments are done so that you go, hmm, really? You know, chicken wire, really? Some of the most fascinating paintings came out of that. But only fascinating for the people that did them or us looking at them. But the, the people who were sitting on the fence, it wasn't that powerful for them. And you don't have to spend a lot of hours. I'm more interested in the idea. So if you're going to do a painting, let's say you, you, you're going to try to do this, which I highly recommend because this is really where the, the main part of this class is. I would set everything up and go, how, do something with this. Get the lights and shadows in and only put in a couple of hours. If you come up with the idea and you bring it in, it's a pass. I'm more interested in the idea. If you kind of come in with something that's kind of based in like this with no idea in it, then you're going to get yelled at by me. Mm -hmm. I don't yell, but I can be steamy. I'm Stefan Bauman. Welcome to the Grand View. America's National Parks through the eyes of an artist.